is a gang star. This is a gang star. For uploading reptilian shapeshifters to YouTube. Tell you the truth. Yes. They are reptilians. They shapeshift from human form into lizard form. I saw this with my own eyes many, many times. And trust me when I tell you they are the most evil, evil creatures that you could possibly imagine on this planet. All right, so it's come to my attention that it's not just that God doesn't like most Christians, and most Christians have the wrong idea, for we know that many are called, but few are chosen. If you're not chosen, you're not gonna make it. Many are called to be Christians, few are chosen. In fact, he's so disgusted with Christians, there's some demons that he likes better. At least they have a sense of humor or something, you know? Uh, and at least they're honest a little bit more so than Christians that are doing nothing to stand out, doing nothing to show bold thinking. Because that's the only way you're going to get God's attention. People who think they're talking with the Lord and they haven't done anything really bold to get themselves noticed, they're not talking with God. They're talking with a demon that Satan sends to his lovely bastion of false Christians who he loves. Oh, Satan loves his false Christians because they're food. Mmm, false Christians, so tasty. He's got a whole lovely garden of them because he knows that they haven't done anything bold to stand out. He knows that they've gone along with church doctrine. They haven't stood out. I know from personal experience. I was one of them. I didn't do anything to stand out. I had read that you've got to be doing something that the pastor Tony Alamo said in his writings, which I found on the streets of Los Angeles, which the Lord instructed him to do rather than make a big television evangelical event out of his life. I told him, no, you make paper pamphlets and pass them out on the streets of Los Angeles for the homeless and the F-ups and the raggedy ass to find them on the streets, you see, and the, and the passerby and the rejected and the people that aren't thought of much. So what we've got is a bunch of simpering cowards that God really doesn't care about. Okay, and you say, well, that doesn't sound like God. Jesus loves everyone. Nah, I, I gotta fill you in. He, he actually doesn't. Um, you say, well, you know, that, that's, that does sound very godly to me, uh, Mr. Bruce. Uh, you know, I mean, are you gonna say that God doesn't care? No, I'm not gonna say God doesn't care about it. He doesn't give a shit about a lot of these people, okay? And that's just the fact. Because, why? They don't give a shit about him. They haven't done anything to stand out. They haven't done anything to show bold thinking, to, to do something. I was just telling somebody, you either have to show bold thinking, courage in the face of danger, or have works that are outstanding, that aren't wasting time on throwaways, Homeless, raggedy-ass pukes. <laughs> yeah. I can speak from experience. I know what these people are. Both the homeless pukes and the Christian pukes that will waste time on them when you could be doing something for the Lord. 
that was interesting, useful, outstanding. Because without that, friends, if you don't get the attention of the Lord to make him go, oh, oh wait, wait, there's something here. You're, what you're showing is that you don't care enough about him to be outstanding. You don't, you don't have it within yourself to be something bold, daring, interesting, going against the grain, something that rises above the cowardly pukes who won't stray from their bullshit churches that teach bullshit. Because guess what? They're all bullshit. And they're not making it. Not making it. You've got to be standing out. You've got to be striving. You've got to be First Officer Spock in that episode of Star Trek when there's nothing left and there's only a little bit of fuel and, and you're going to die and, and, and there's smoke rising and, and the, 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 the Enterprise is way far away and they can't communicate and he looks at the blast the fuel button which would only make their fuel last just for a few seconds more when they could have lasted another 20 minutes in their puke-like condition! And he presses the button! It's, it's gone! He goes, what are you doing? You're gonna kill us, man! There's only a few minutes left! But the Enterprise sees, sees the, the expenditure of fuel, the sudden burst of energy. And he sees it on the, on the, on the thing. And he goes, look, there they are. And he beams them up and they're saved. This is what has got to happen to you or you're not making it, says pastor from Los Angeles, Richard Bruce. I was just talking with somebody locally that uh, he judges by money, how much money you have. And so to him, I'm a low life. And uh, he, came, he came from poverty and then made his way over to America and now he's a millionaire. He's got a nice condo and several of the cars and he's has stock in these businesses and everything but and and the scripture tells us um, do not uh, reprove a wicked man or you'll get yourself a blot and um, that's I, I wouldn't want to say that I know for sure he's a wicked man but that's my feeling and I don't want to speak against anybody it's just somebody I, I happen to be talking to but what's interesting is that you got you got these people that that is how they judge that is that is the, the measure that they go by and and almost no way that I could explain to him and have him believe me that I figured out what the world was early on I could sense what it was and I chose because we were talking I said I, I came from wealth and now I'm poor because I said my mother my mother was a medical doctor my father was a businessman and we had money uh, and uh, and my stepdad was a rocket scientist and we lived on an 11 acre ranch with uh, pool, tennis courts, hot tub, um, stables, horses, you know, that kind of thing. Now, I've got nothing. I live in a little crap can RV, which I'm lucky if people don't drive me out of the place. <laughs> and this old clunker, which I can give you my assurance. It's no respect on the roads here in Los Angeles, especially here in Brentwood. <laughs> I'm the house cleaner. <laughs> I clean someone's houses. If they see it's a white, if they see it's not a, a Latino guy, oh, there must be something wrong. That's a poor scum. I'm scum. Could I get anybody watching to believe that I chose? not to have money. I chose this life if I wanted, what I'm saying is if I wanted money, I could go out and get it. It'd take me a year or two, at least, maybe a little longer. But if I wanted it, you know, if I said, okay, you know what, uh, uh, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do is I, I need some money. There's a 
bunch of things I could do. I mean, investing, whatever, blah, 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 starting a small business, blah, blah, blah. If I wanted to, I could do it. All these idiots can do it. And that, and that guy, by the way, that millionaire I was talking with, with several nice cars, and you know, he's a multi-millionaire, and he came came over from uh, someplace, and, and and that was much poorer, and he came to here, and now and now he's made up his fortune. Could could I could could I possibly get him to believe that I chose it? I chose it, and I could have done it. I could have. I said, you know, well, I'm just gonna. Hey, why not? Because here's the why not. Because I knew, I knew what this was. How I knew it, the Lord gave it to me to know, I think. And maybe some people just know instinctively, like they've been through many lives, who knows what it is, karmic memory, you know, past lives or whatever, or, you know, they've, at one time they were an angel, now they're human, or who, who knows what, and they, and they also realize what this is and choose not to do them. Choose to be poor, as poor as you need to be. Even misery on the streets with nothing every day. But I believe the scripture also provides for us to know that being so poor that you need to beg on the street, like actually people with signs or people actually begging, that is also a sign of not being saved, not being righteous, because the scripture even says, as David said in the Psalms, that he has not seen his seed, that is the Jews, nor the righteous begging bread. So if you see someone begging bread, now I'm not saying that there isn't a, a cause to, to help out people when they're poor and down, but know what God says about it, okay? The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is the fact of the matter of what Scripture tells us. The fact is that that equals being forsaken. And why are they forsaken? Because they are they have shown themselves to be entirely unrighteous. Now there's people that experience sin like all of us and they do wrong things, but God knows your heart and knows that you know, he, you, he can tell by your actions, you know, if you were sorry, even if you didn't say sorry, and didn't stop right away of some sin you were doing, but he knows that if you, if you felt that inner, inner conflict, he knows who's righteous. He knows who will stop and say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait, it doesn't matter whether I understand it or not, this just feels wrong and I don't like it. So you, so you start to move away from it. And then of course, God will reveal what's going on here. All right, we're getting a buzz straight away as I'm walking here in Santa Monica, uh, 20th of April, 2024. Coming, coming slow and coming hard. And uh, sometimes they'll do this uh, if uh, they have like some kind of event like Saturday when there's a lot of people. And you see how slow he's, he's flying overhead? That's a black and white LAPD. This is a gang stalk for uploading reptilian shapeshifter movies to YouTube. And uh, you see that could uh, also easily be a hologram, just so you understand. So that was a buzz, that was definitely a buzz for uploading reptilian shapeshifter movies to YouTube. Believe it or fail to understand. Now, where there are 1,833 of them that have been living underground between 100 and 200 miles beneath the surface. They've been here, some of them have been here a long, long time. They have lifespans that are thousands of years. Uh, uh, they're carnivorous. They're not friendly to mankind, um, at least the ones that are here. Are you saying carnivorous, they eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are uh, other people say, well, you better not talk about the reptilians. Well, you know, uh, bull, you know, uh, why not? According to the Andromedans, uh, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough.
you know, the feeling I get is that there's one, once you're identified as an enemy of Satan's kingdom, they know that you know about the devils, the reptilians, you know about, you know, the deep state and all that stuff. They have, they have these whole cadre of, of witches that are, uh, they, they're like 24 seven, they're, they're casting spells against you. They're trying everything they can, you know, sorcerers, demons, trying to put curses on you and stuff. And uh, I can tell you that, uh, not to brag, because I know I can be a braggart like anybody else, and me being especially prone to that, I'd say, but they really do go ape shit over me. Now, I, I know a lot of people, uh, TIs that I've talked with and, and heard, they, uh, they report similar stuff, you know, they, they just go nuts over them somehow, you know, like you can just notice all this activity, but when you live in a big city, like I do in Los Angeles. And uh, right away, as I started walking, I got that that buzz, meaning that they're like they're like strongly objecting to me mingling in with with all of their meat because they're I think that they're they, they kind of they're afraid of it. They're afraid of of regular people meeting you, getting to know you, and then hearing what you have to say, and possibly waking up. Of course, it's to me. I, I don't know what the fear is. I mean, because you know, the, as you know, 99% of people don't want to wake up. They don't want to know. They want they want the evening news on television. You know, that's it. They do. They do not want to know the dark truth. They don't want to investigate it. They don't want to know it. They don't want to hear it, see it, talk about it. And they certainly hate you if you do, and and don't want to listen to anything like that. So that's just the reality. So I don't know why they I don't know why they would freak out over something like that, but they do. They 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 go ape sometimes. Where the rubber meets the road with all this eternal life stuff and and turning away from the darkness of the world and the suffering and everything is when now either in times past it was when you die, but there was no proof in the world. There was no manifestation because the world needed to be a place of judgment where no, no man knows, therefore he lives in faith. But the time is coming when that will start a change, it'll still be a place where people need to live by faith, I believe, during the next thousand years, the millennial reign of Christ, which hasn't even begun yet. But what you got is that coming up, some people are gonna get, gain life. And when they do, as the scripture tells us in Psalm 45, they will be more comely than the children of men, which I've been talking about forever, but it bears repeating because um, I, I think that there's a, one of the big misunderstandings is that if you, if you have any sort of thought or mention or hope in, in the scene, things that are in this world, that means that you are, you are uh, you're setting your affection on the world rather than God. But actually, um, as I've been saying, there is a further understanding of that, which is that actually a lot of people are going to be eternal lives, worthy of eternal life, and they are going to be looking forward to that life in the world, not up in heaven that's in some abstract that no one can prove, see, know, hear, or care about really because it's so far removed from the reality that we can see before us. The Christian who has faith is living his life believing in something he hasn't seen and could be wrong about it all. That's that's the thing. So what's, what's interesting though is that the world is going to change from a place where there was nothing, and I mean zip, zero, nothing, that that give us gives us tangible ideas a tangible something you can see there's a manifestation now I think um, what's gonna happen for a long time and, and I know that that's just fine but those people being redeemed in the earth with the body that's more comely than the children than the children of men that is naturally born people they're gonna be born of the spirit with a body that doesn't age um, and also they're gonna have a soul which doesn't lie doesn't lie and doesn't have any of those sins 
because we know again from the example of the daughter of Jerusalem, God says to the daughter of Jerusalem that he will no more be wroth with her, nor rebuke her. This is really, that's, see that to me is one of the most amazing things. He will not be wroth, nor rebuke her, meaning that if you do something wrong, it's going to cause somebody to get mad, okay? And that means that our lives and our personalities are going to be so perfect that the same as the daughter of Jerusalem, we're not going to offend, we're not going to sin. Whereas now, as Romans 7 and 8 tells us, we almost have no choice. I'm not saying there isn't a choice, there is, but we're going to, we're going to see that and people are going to experience, I'm hoping to experience, a life where you almost, you, where, where there's, there is no question about it, you will not make a mistake, a moral mistake, you will not step out of line, and even a lot of uh, uh, just like errors not even having to do with sin will be gone as well. Because the scripture says that they will not be offended, that's kind of unrelated to what I was just saying, but that's just another example of the difference in what will be. But what I mean as, as far as like, uh, just like clerical errors, you know, like mechanical errors, we're going to be a lot more accurate than we've been. Now, yes, I think what's happening is that the devils are coming in and they, they control the minds or they even might be devils themselves, shapeshifters. And they, they, they're very good actors. They can pretend like, oh, they're, they're so goodly in their speech. You know, like guy with the patch over his eye, whatever his name is, they all these Republicans. And uh, they get in and like, oh, they're, you know, they're so conservative, they're so, uh, they're so righteous. But then they, don't, they, they, they never act. And then people don't, don't understand why nothing, cha nothing changes. Because I believe the devil makes sure that he can control all of these politicians. That, that's, that somehow are allowed to get in. And if they can't be controlled, they JFK them, okay? That's what happens, they get, they get offed. If, if they go against the establishment narrative. So the only ones that get in, and, and then like if someone, if, if they can't kill them or, re, or if they can't replace them, then they kill them. But they, they, I think they can, they can replace them, mind control them or blackmail them. But that's just the that's just the lower rung of, of understanding what's happening. I think, as I've said, it's a judgment. That's what's happening. It's actually a judgment that's that's coming upon our country because of the sin of the occupations that people are doing that I was talking about earlier in this video. They are people are acquiescing to doing this evil so they can have their nice house, their nice car and they can be esteemed among men and not be hated and poor and, and shunned and, and have nothing and have be, be disrespected by some schmuck bag who managed to crawl over here from some shithole, gained for himself some wealth, and now he thinks he's better than me because he has no idea what's really happening here. You know, um, as I, and you can probably tell, I'm not a very impressive person to look at. Um, but, you know, one thing that does comfort me that when uh, I, I encounter various uh, people that kind of give me like a, a snooty look or, you know, like I can just tell, you know, they're, they're good looking and they have friends and they have money and everything, or even like really advanced knowledge, you know, they're very smart. I take comfort in the fact that there is, and it's a fact, not my opinion, it, there is no higher knowledge than the knowledge of God. Because everyone who doesn't realize the knowledge of God and what's really happening here and what he's doing here with this filtering of souls, they're, they're playing fools for this puny little life that you get in this world where if you're lucky, no, no, if you're, if you're really lucky, you die before you grow old. I was gonna talk about that, you know, the scripture does mention that the, the gray hairs on the head of the elderly are a glory, but, uh, well, gray I don't have a problem with. Everything else I do, okay? When that dude from the bar in The Simpsons says old people are no good at nothing, well, I have to agree because, you know, as I'm getting older here, all my systems are falling apart, man. 
you know? And getting sicker and sicker. I've been sick for a long time with something. I don't know what it is. It's not like uh, cancer or anything like that. It's like something, something wrong with my blood, like a blood disease. I haven't really got it identified. I think it's one of those things that's not easy for uh, doctors to identify. But just as an ex just one thing is, so this uh, one of these uh, demonic beings that my Anna was um, ran into in in the bottom of the ocean. He knew everything about me because he tells her because because. Like he want, he wanted something. Like he was a devil that was able to provide miracles and stuff. Like God gives them certain stuff that they can give to humans, right? So um, she told uh, uh, this this devil being of like, like a sea creature that was afraid of, of my Anna. Like like it was running away from her, and then but she caught up to it and started talking to it. And then that that creature, that demonic being in the ocean, okay, it's in, the, in the depths of the ocean, it was like a sea monster thing, okay. And it said that that it knew me and it knew that I was sick and offered to heal me. And then when, when Anna told me that, I said, no, no, don't, don't, do not take his deal. Whatever, you know, they're devils. So whenever you get something, it's gonna be with a price that's too high. You don't want it, okay? So I told her right away and she, you know, luckily she was, you know, she was one of the smartest, coolest people I have ever known. Uh, if I could even, I don't know if you know, know if I could, uh, oh, check this out. Oh, they're practicing surfing, check it out. <laughs> cool. Yeah, friends. Uh, now, again, it's all a matter of opinion, but it's my opinion that that there was the coolest woman on earth and she loved me. So I'm very proud of that fact. I'm letting it go to my head. I think I'm better than everyone else because of it. Okay, to sufficiently lower my ego, I'm gonna tell you a shameful thing about my life, which is that being a skinny man, fat chicks find me a hot commodity because they think I'm I'm like, you know, there's a chance right there. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I said I really get this. So in that question of what to do about the fact that no one is stopping the, the invasion and, and a bunch of other stuff, you know, the war on farmers, just unbelievable crap that's going on. And there's, there's this big, you know, up, uproar and hubbub among those that are awake, which you know, I think it's there's it's it's now getting to be a, a plurality, except that there's 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 so many more people who are in charge of of the government and have money and everything else, and the people that have you know the elites and then the, their their sub elites, the Palisades, you might say, um, they don't don't know what's going on and don't see any reason to change it. So there's so there's but but the, but you know, especially with the pandemic, more and more people are waking up. And then the question comes, what to do about it, you know? What, how can we change it? Well, the first thing you gotta realize is that when you have a situation where people are being abducted out of their homes with beings that have technology to pull people through walls and all this other weird stuff going on, they have these big underground bases and all this stuff going on, that the, the reality that most humans live in is not the reality we have it. This is, this is a, a controlled situation. I mean, I'm not talking about just the Lord, but even on the ground here, we have these non-humans with tech that far surpasses anything man can even believe exists, and people don't want to talk about alien abduction, but it's happening to so many people, it's unbelievable, even right in the city in broad daylight, if you do the research. So, as far as changing the situation, the first thing to acknowledge is that there is tech and tools being deployed against us that keeps this evil agenda in place that are beyond what anybody can believe exists. And, and if we don't acknowledge that, that we're dealing with something that is, that we're gonna have to expand our mind to realize for instance, that it's the serpent from the Garden of Eden is our primary enemy. God says serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, okay? So serpents, I believe, is the lizard men, reptilians. 
and scorpions, I believe, are the xenomorphs from the movie Aliens, although we don't hear or see them as much. But they're probably more prevalent in the spirit realm, in the spirit dimension, which uh, those of us who have been watching this, the CERN thing think that's, that's probably what CERN is, is, is an attempt to make a bridge from their domain into ours, which God says they will not be successful in doing, but um, they're going to try. I, my, my guess is why, I'm just making a very broad speculation here, that um, they're trying to make a bridge between the two dimensions, and the reason um, it doesn't work all that well is because the beings that are in that dimension have to be converted to the material of our dimension, otherwise there's no point in being in this dimension. Uh, because um, we're made of material, you know, uh, matter that's different than the material in their matter. It's a different density, different vibration of molecules. So what happens is um, that really in order to cross over into our dimension to have any use um, means that, um, I mean in order to appear as we do, they would have to actually undergo a complete molecular change. And, and so they're, you know, and maybe they don't, I don't know, maybe they don't get that, I don't know. Or they're trying to, they're trying to figure out how to do it. Now we can't get a clear picture on what these non-humans are. You know, the greys, the reptilians, the, the bird beasts, whatever. I think that they're, just, they're just descendants of fallen angels, but then they could also be naturally occurring, occurring beasts, okay? That, you know, that God made separately from any angels that might have uh, been turned into beasts for turning away from God. But my guess would be these underground bases and the abductions and everything of the insectoids and the reptilians and the greys and this, you know, all that underground bases or undersea bases. I would say even if there are extraterrestrials, and I don't know if there are, we can't figure that out, you know, we don't know whether that's a lie or not, but Still, I would say that these, the abductions and the control over society, the mind control, the gang stalking and everything, I would say that that's devils. That's just my guess. So, just going with that for a minute, if they are, the question is, can we defeat devils or not? So if we're still asking the question, what can we do about it? The question is, how can we defeat the devils? can we defeat the devils and how do we do it? Well, I think that probably without the full cooperation of the entirety of humanity, and I mean the elites as well, um, there is no, I, I hate to be pessimistic, but I don't think that there's a, there's a way because it's going to take God coming and doing it. Okay, that's what you've got. You've got the, you got when the Lord comes, then he, he'll do something about it, Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But until then, um, you know, it's, I don't think, I don't think we can wrest military control away from these devils because they're too powerful. So let's say there was a way to defeat them. You know, there was, Let's let's just let's just give it a hypothetical that there was a way to defeat them. Well, that's the, the what I mentioned about people knowing what's going on would be the first mission. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. But the devils control social media, at least most of it, and and ones that they don't control, they can minimize. So any any large outlets like Facebook, Twitter, uh, X, you know, don't don't be fooled by the way. Now, it, 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 to me, it's kind of a hopeful sign, like, you know, maybe, but I'm still skeptical. I don't use uh, Twitter X anymore um, because uh, not too long ago, I, I was kind of hopeful when Elon Musk bought it, but then I was making a comment, and then, this, then uh, tw uh, Twitter gave me this, this uh, warning message of some kind, and I basically said, uh, nah, I don't want anybody telling me what I can say and what I can't say, or somebody getting suspicious, forget it. So they, so devils control everything, you see? And so if they do, then 
um, you know, it's hard to get the message out because most people, you can't, you know, you can't make enough people aware of the truth, you know, via flyers or whatever, and they're not going to believe in any case, right? Absolutely not going to believe. See, um, but I think that um, these devils and the way the way God has has ar arranged this whole thing is such that um, if you're thinking that you're going to have a military victory, okay, you're going to you're going to be able to get a military victory over the reptilians, the the devils, okay and all their super high-tech UFO technology, anti-gravity technology, but they're not gonna tell man how it works, right? And man's not gonna be able to figure it out or, or, or in a limited capacity. And, uh, and in any case, they're gonna keep the whole thing secret from the majority of people on Earth, even though a lot of people are aware there's non-humans, extraterrestrials, you know, conspiracy-minded people, but most people wanna stick their nose in the sand and enjoy what they can get out of this life and they know that if they talk about this stuff, the devils who are in charge of everything are going to ruin their lives. That's why people don't come out. That's why it's like you'll, you'll be ostracized if you talk about this stuff. So it's, it's a matter where if, if there was a way to defeat the devils, it would have to be like a, a limited number of people who do it. Again, I don't think there is. I think that there's... There's, to, to, to think that you can get a military victory, it's the only way you're going to change the world, okay? Because these beings are, are able to control, as I said, politicians and everyone else that makes policy to the extent that we can't even tell what's going on, okay? And if we can't, if we can't even tell what's going on, then um, you, you know, you're, not, you're not going to be able to defeat them. And, um, as we know from Jimmy Payne, and other sources, but he, he was a great source. Uh, check out Jimmy Payne on the Super Soldier Talk channel, either on, better better do it on Rumble because they don't have the censorship. He, he does have a YouTube channel. But um, bottom line to it is that he said that he was a, a man in black, and they and they basically shut people up for, for saying things that are gonna wake the general public up. They do not want people to know and they have a certain like deadline threshold whatever that they stick to and they are not going to uh, going to lose control of the uh, of the narrative I'm telling you guys I am smelling so much weed like like it, I don't think five minutes goes by without getting a blast of weed in the face that's what that's what legalization of weed has uh, has come to bring us. So, just real quick, running through a scenario. Let's say you were able to get like, you know, a very good number of people. You know, let's just say we could get, you know, who knows what it is, maybe 10 million people as part of like a, a militia to to take over, take, take back the United States. Um, I mean, just roughly, you know, putting something out there. Um, or let's say, let's say someone starts up a militia that's like a, a countrywide militia and, you know, with the intent of, of basically overthrowing the powers that be, okay? Now, I, I think what will happen in that, in that scenario is that they have, they have even time control or whatever, time control, mind control, people control, again, to an extent that no one can believe is possibly happening. Therefore, the thing is that they'll see it coming. So, so like, let's just say that there was a potential leader, you know, somebody who would, you know, be capable enough to get a, a militia, you know, going to free the, the deep state, uh, free, free America from the deep state and and get rid of them and put the people back in charge, okay? Because those of us that are paying attention know that actually it's not the people who are in charge, okay? 
it's devils, okay? That's who's doing this mass immigration to destroy America. It's not people. It's not greedy people with some sort of evil, effed up agenda. It's devils, okay? Non-humans that are so evil, you can't even imagine how evil they are, okay? And, and so, and, and, and again, they have a very, Satan has a very firm control over the world because guess, guess what? God gave it to him. Probably for the purposes of judgment. If the devils are of the devil, and we know from scripture that God has given the world into the hand of the devil, right? Are you going to very well defeat the devil? No, because God has given him the kingdoms of the earth for his purpose. Meaning that the this whole thing is not about can we defeat the devils, i.e. the devil, right? So then it becomes not about defeating the aliens from outer space or the devils that are corrupting our society, even though we'd love to. We'd love to drive them out. We'd love to get control over our world. But it ain't happening except exactly how God has outlined in Revelation. Okay? Babylon has to burn. World War III has to come. Two-thirds of the world has to die. Probably more than that according to what Revelation says. So then it becomes about personal choice, right? What are you going to do? Your own personal decision, what you're going to do in this whole situation, right? That's, that's what it all boils down to. Because it's not, it's not can we defeat the deep state. The deep state is Satan. God has given Satan over the world. Then the question becomes, how are you going to make it into God's good graces so that, so that you can be someone who benefits from His coming and liberating the world? Because the scripture also says that the entire world will mourn when Lord Jesus <laughs> and the Holy Spirit come into the world, right? Even so, the, 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 the it says, the world will mourn, even so, amen. Meaning, good. Even if they, if, if they mourn at the, at the coming, and they see the sign of the Son of Man, and, and some people are happy, and some people are unhappy, right? But you want to be one of those people that are happy when He comes and overthrows the world structure. Which probably means that the world is not going to be as comfortable a place for a while. Right? We're not going to have fast food as much. We're not going to have some of the benefits that we've had. We'll have to rebuild. But maybe hopefully we can get the ETs to help us with that too. Let's get anti-gravity tech so we can have cars that don't pollute. So of that remaining question, what to do about it? What, what's your personal decision going to be? That's wherein lies the importance of knowing what God's Word says. All of these people here, chances are, I mean, some of them maybe, but they really don't know. And even Christians, you know, you find out they've been Christians for years and they just haven't 
bother to read and understand, at least try to understand, but at least know what it says. Even if you don't understand, at least know what it says. So that's, and, and, and then God will teach you, like I said, God is with you every single moment. He'll know when you're ready to receive a teaching. When I started to pass out flyers locally, even though it was small, just a small circulation, right after that, God led me into a ministry where now anything I post gets a, a thousand views, even with massive, massive shadow banning by YouTube, okay? And if you're watching this, it's not too late. Say this prayer now. Father in heaven, please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.